I'm kind of getting what you're going for, but I'm not totally feeling exactly what you're going for. All right. So, you ready? All right. And we're back with another exciting adventure into the mind of the incredible folks. I am Chris. I am Mark. You have an interesting hypothesis slash question slash topic slash discussion mm -hmm. to throw out there. So, mm -hmm. what do you have to, to, to delve into today? Well, here... Here's the, here's the background and then the question. The background, a lot of speculation in print media and social media about the fact that the, that, uh, the box office receipts for 2014 were the lowest in a long time, okay. 12, 13 years. Okay. And there's been speculation for years uh, in, about the video sales and physical uh, CD, uh, excuse me, DVDs and Blu-rays, and the and, uh -huh. and physical product has been dwindling. Uh, more and more people are going to internet streaming, and they're sure. going digital, and so there's a lot of speculation out there about it, it, its impact mm -hmm. on the theaters and what that means for the future. Sure. So that's kind of the background, and it it made me kind of think of a couple of questions. You know, one. Uh, what kinds of things are Hollywood thinking that they'll do to to be able to compete in the future? Okay. And then, and then, secondly, what are the what are specific things they think is impacting? Uh, or what are what are, what are things that are if people are going to theaters less, what is driving that? That's the best way to say that. Well, what's driving people going to the theaters less? Is kind of the obvious answer. You said streaming and online services, um, and your red box is becoming popular. Now, red box and online killed the video store chain. When Blockbuster was, Blockbuster at one time was so big, it dictated movie edits. So, like, they would cut stuff to not be rated X or R even. Yeah. To make sure that's how big people under forget how big Blockbuster was. That's how big they were. It, it affected product of movies. So, for that reason alone, Good fucking riddance, Blockbuster. I hope you died a miserable death. Because I, a company like that should never dictate the product of the movie. So, may you rest in hell, Blockbuster. <laughs> Fuck you forever and die. Alright, so, I had to get that off my chest because I hated that when that was going on. So, I forgot, I, even back, I forgot about it until we just mentioned it. Yeah. God, I hate a Blockbuster. Set. So, good fucking riddance, Blockbuster. <laughs> uh... But anyway, so you know, the obvious answer is streaming and, and Redbox stuff. That hurts attendance things. But, I mean, I think there's, there's so much competition for attention of human yeah. beings in America and even globally. I mean, you had the college football playoffs for the first time ever this year. So interest in college football had to go up. The NFL is still the, the, the biggest TV show on, on in America is NFL football. It's on... Yeah. Monday night, it's on Thursday night, it's on uh, Sundays all day. Mm -hmm. So three nights of the week you got football. Yeah. So you're not going to the movies those three times, usually. Um, and video games and, uh, and, 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 and internet-based gaming. So just we'll just call it gaming in general as a catch-all. That, people are just into it in all age groups. Uh, Trisha's brother is, is playing an online game. He's on. He's not even a gamer per se, but he's on there doing his uh, uh, smart pad, checking up with his, checking in with it, doing his game. And, and, and if this if this guy's into this game, then that means it's really successful because he usually is not a gamer type. So you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, it's it's gaming has crossed all the gender and 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 demographic boundaries and stuff. So short answer, I think there's so much competition. For attention of Americans, and, and then on top of all, you got TV shows. TV TV's as big as it's ever been. Netflix has made binge watching uh, a, a thing where yeah. you watch an entire show, let alone a season. Now you watch five seasons until you're done watching them. Mm -hmm. You know, like Breaking Bad, you can watch like all five seasons of Breaking Bad at yeah. once now, as fast as you can get them watched. Yeah. So I just think that. I think it's just a lot of competition is what it comes down to. Well, uh, in terms of 
them making a film that costs like two hundred million dollars. Now here's the price tag to make this, and then you have fewer and fewer people going to the theater. You think at some point they're going to be have to make maybe some budget cuts or some reevaluation of their business uh -huh. in in Hollywood. What do you mean? I mean well, in, in a, it, it, there's been times. I'll just use the late '60s as an example. Television went into its golden era, and so many people were staying home. Yeah, it, it, the drop off, the attendance drop off for movies really was hurting into the the, the big studios. That, right. And so you had Jack Warner, you know, the Warner Brothers got sold to a corporation, and 20th Century Fox, on, and on and on. You get the point. Uh, these big these these companies aren't owned anymore and haven't been for decades now by their original owners. They, they're owned by corporations okay. now. And so when those corporations took over, 20th Century Fox, for example, just slashed all these these budgets like in half okay. to get them in the black. And then so films, they started making a lot more contemporary pieces because they were cheaper. You know, you just go outside and shoot. You didn't have to make a period uh -huh. piece. So fewer period pieces and fewer set pieces, it became more and more contemporary pieces to kind of accommodate so what I'm saying is the industry has contracted before, and I'm wondering what kind of things they think they might have to do, or if you think they even will have to. But to me, if you have a dwindling audience attendance, at some point you just can't just keep spending two hundred million, two hundred fifty million on these movies and keep missing with a movie like uh, like this past year. We've had a couple of. In the last couple of years, you've had some notable misfires, like Lone Ranger. That was a huge 200-plus million mm -hmm. bomb. And then most recently, uh, Exodus was about 200 million, and it bombed. Well, I mean, there's certain, they got a lot of stuff going on there. You know, in, in the future, well, the future is now, to be honest with you. We're, we live in this future. Yeah. Uh, they're going to just keep making franchises and comic book movies and young adult book bestseller movies f and for the foreseeable future because there's a built-in audience for them. And frankly, mm -hmm. they make, they're make easy bets to make money. So I think where we are now is is the future and will be for another 10 years or so, unless technology changes that I can't predict. Uh, where we are now is the movies are for your really big movies, your Iron Man's, Avengers, Star Wars, new ones coming up, that kind of thing. And then home audience is for your other ones. So, for instance, and, and I'm just making up something here, where you go, you're go, you going to go to the movies to see Captain America 2, but the same actor, um, Hoochie Doo, Chris, what's his name, plays Captain America. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Captain America guy. Yeah. Is also in Snowpiercer in the same year, mm -hmm. but that really found its legs on video demand and streaming and things like that. It, it had a theatrical run, but wasn't very big. It really got noticed and attention on like on demand, like Direct TV's pay per view, yeah. or you know on demand video services. That's true. Yeah. So this is the same guy in two different movies in the same year that were both successful, but in different ways. Big tentpole blockbuster Captain America 2 at the theater, Snowpiercer, and the new technologies having an audience there. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to happen more and more is you will see uh, your franchises go into the theaters for events, but your dramas and your independence and your not as safe a bet for box office draw movies going on demand. So you'll still have an audience for. You know, Michael Clayton with 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 was George Clooney. You know, that's not a big sprawling action no. movie, but it's a good intense drama. Sure. I can see at some point those pretty much always going to streaming and on demand. But Clooney in, you know, uh, <laughs> some kind of big action movie. We go to the theater. Yeah. That makes sense. What yeah. My point. Yeah. Um, so using the, 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 the Captain America, I, Chris, I can't even think of his freaking is name. It, is it Evans? Chris Evans? Chris Evans. Thank you. Um, Chris Evans. That's the great, that to me is, 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 is where we are and will be for a while. 
so you still get the same content, mm -hmm. or you still get content, but it's delivered in different ways. I, I, I will say, just based on my own research on this, if it wasn't for foreign box office, which is on fire, there the, the, just the movies are doing very well overseas. Uh, domestic sales are way down, uh -huh. so it, it really the, if the foreign sales ever yeah. hit a dry spot or start oh. tanking, then uh, there may be more panic in Hollywood or whatever. But I, I, my last thought on this is I, I, I read where the theater distribution chains, you know, like Regal and all that. Some of these uh, different ones have, have, have gone out of business and they've had to been bought out by uh -huh. other chains. Sure. And, but, so while the, ch the, the number of chains that are profitable and being made is going down, the percentage of IMAXs are actually, those are on the rise. <clears throat> so is this kind of, once again, where they're like, hey, uh, the, the the marketplace is kind of caught up with us. We've got it, and movies always find a way to attract the next generation by coming up with the bigger and better idea. You know, where before you had the 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 full screen uh -huh. Academy ratio, then they went to widescreen in the fifties, right? Yeah. To compete with TV. Well, then they did three D. What about six years ago? Well, now maybe the next big thing is, you know. Putting IMAXs everywhere. Or, well, it goes back to well that 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 to me correlates to what I was saying, where going to the movies is more of an event. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a spectacle. So if more and more movies become IMAX, that means more spectacle. Yeah. So that's the same thing. It's just a different. I think at some point, I think where we are where we are now is that you go to the movies to see s special things. Mm -hmm. And you wait for home video for the stuff you're not that crazy about, you know. Yeah, you know, so yeah. Ur the urgency is not the same. Just this past year, we saw. Mm -hmm. I, I was late to seeing Galaxy. It was really busy at the time when it first came out. For whatever reason, I had a lot of stuff going on, and so I got to see it. You know, two or three weeks after it had already been out, we went and saw it on IMAX mm. uh, and paid the extra. You know, it's like 15 bucks a ticket or whatever it is. Pay more, but I really enjoyed it. 3D, huge screen, had a great time. Blasted the year. It was an event. You know, it was one of those like, okay, I remember when I saw Galaxy on, uh, on IMAX. It was really special. So, again, an event movie. But other films, you know, just waited till I watched at home. Just like, but, but, but it's no different than we used to do. Sure. Back in the day, you would go to Flix and rent a movie that you didn't have to go see immediately and but you know terminator 2 you're there first night it comes out you know? yeah yeah so it really it hasn't changed just the delivery methods have changed mm -hmm. you've always gone to the movies to see spectacles american sniper 90 million dollar opening weekend why everybody wanted to see that in the theater didn't want to wait that would look like a, a movie they wanted to connect with and, mm -hmm. and it has obviously connected with the audience so they went and jumped at seeing it 90 million Conversely, Whiplash, one of my favorites of the year, it will be found at, on home video, streaming or otherwise. Yeah. You know, it's just, movies are just, their delivery methods have changed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and, and, and I guess closing on this segment, my, my final thought is thinking about our generation. Yeah. Was, I call it, you know, we're really the Star Wars generation. Yes. That excited us. Uh, we we really loved just really kind of epic and ambitious, big, yeah. big kind of fi filmmaking. Um, go for the bleachers kind of filmmaking. So and and films, you know, were, that's that was our that was our pastime. That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. Sure. This the millennial generation, the generations past that, have different things that are their pastimes. Sure. And I just wonder how much of an impact that'll have going forward. Uh, and no one knows the answer, but I think right now you do get an indication that certainly the millennials care far more for it. For, they care more for video games than they do films. But they still want to see films. It's clear, you know, whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy was popular with young folks or Fault in Our Stars 
or Hunger Games, whatever yeah. it is, there's they're still they still want to see movies. And I think that's that's not going to go away. It's just is it going to be the big uh, the big thing to do for them is it maybe their first thing that they want to do? Probably not. Well, I, I see having two teenager kids. I see that they just connect with media. It don't really. This, they're not like I'm a movie guy. I'm a video game guy. They just absorb media. They're surrounded by media, so they just absorb it all. I I, I don't see a division with uh, my two teenagers. I, I, they don't see a division of I'm a movie guy, I'm a video game guy, I'm a music guy, or whatever. They just all media is absorbed because it's all at their disposal via their smartphone or whatever else. So mm -hmm. I don't think it. Ha I think the new generation just absorbs media wherever they can get it from. And if it's a big enough event, they go to the theater to see it. If not, they just interact with it on their phone or, or whatever. You know, does that make sense? Sure. It's, it's, you can't even, it's, like, it's complete apples and oranges compared with our generation because our generation is like, I was a movie guy. This person was a music guy. This person right. was a football guy. This, You know what I mean? I was a movie guy and you were a music guy for a lot of years. Our other brother was a, a, a sports guy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't connect with sports and I didn't really connect with music and he didn't connect with movies and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, now it's like my daughter knows all the obscure bands that you know. And then some, probably in some ways. But then again, she can talk to me and knows all about these movies too. So she's connected to all the medias. Yeah. So I don't understand. Really but what I think is interesting is the movie stars have changed. Look at Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch's career is completely unique to me because here is this what would have been and used to have been a stuffy British actor. Mm -hmm. He is smart. He's engaged with them on the net through social media. And this guy is a freaking on fire uh, to the millennials, as you put it, through Sherlock and then Khan. And now he's nominated for Best Actor for mm -hmm. an Imitation Game. And he is connected with millennials as well as any actor has. <clears throat> and he's broken out of that boring, tired stuffy British guy thing. Totally smashed right. that to pieces. And he's kind of audience. So I see more and more in the future <clears throat> stars like him coming up that way. Because really Sherlock took off through the net and through streaming and whatnot. And that's how he came to fame here in the States and other countries. Mm -hmm. Other than Britain where he's on the BBC. So you'll see more and more stars like that rising. Because there's now there's a whole generation of Benedict Cumberbatch fans. And there's Still, a bunch of people don't even know who he is, but they're like way late to the party. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's going to be changing. Right. Well, certainly one of the sides, and one of the sides of this issue is the business aspect of it. And if you have a generation of film goers that they just, like you said, it, it's they don't really distinguish on the media. They're just all media. It's It's harder... Not impossible, but I think they're going to have a the, the the studio execs making the films. I think are going to have a harder time, at least initially, reaching them, because I think they're going to have to find different ways to see what to pick the pulse of the millennials. Is I guess is what I one of the things that was on my mind because but, the old ways that they used to do it that worked for Generation X and other generations, but this is a very different. Very internet and media savvy um, generation, and uh, when you're green lining a two hundred million dollar movie, yeah. you have to make smart business decisions, and you want to be sure uh, it's something that someone will have an interest in. So I, I think that will make their marketing department or their whoever green lights their their films. That's going to have to be something they 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 study better. Well, to be fair. All industries are facing the same question. We're just movie buffs, so we see it here. Yeah. The church is dying because they're not reaching millennials. Millennials don't see any reason to go to church whatsoever. Right. It totally has irrelevant to their lives. Completely irrelevant to them. And the smart churches, and the Olstein types and whatnot, mm. have tapped into it and they're reaching them. 
where the old type yeah. of churches are dying, the old fire and brimstone stuff, that's going to be gone uh, in, in not too long. The fire and brimstone church is fixing to be dead. All right, because the millennials won't have it. They just won't. They won't have it. It just it's foreign concept to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's attributed to everything we're going on there. Good or bad, I'm not debating it. I'm just telling you what it is. Yeah, I'm not going religion. I'm just telling you. I'm not here to tell you right or wrong. I'm telling you that's the way it is. Yeah, the, and that's the way the it attendance is. Attendance is down. That is a, a so a fact. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's not me saying any kind of a, a opinion on the matter. Just and then of course the fact. music industry. That's a whole cluster. Mess of its own. Say, it's sort of the same thing. Yeah. But marketing, uh, you know, selling cars, uh, all of these industries are facing these same questions. That's a great point. So it's not just the movies. I, I think people love being told stories. We've always loved as a society and a humanity to be told stories. Every race, every culture has a history of storytelling. Storytelling is not going anywhere. The delivery method will change. There will always be storytelling. Uh, whether it's riding on a cave wall or whether it's getting up on your smartphone, it's always going to be there. Yeah. So I have no fear that the movies will always have a place. The delivery method might change. That's it. So I have his guarantee that movies are going to be around for another hundred years or... Storytelling will be, that's for sure. And uh, otherwise we'll buy you a Coke or something. Yes. And you can have a smile. But careful with what it's laced with. Bill Cosby joke. Cheap Bill Cosby joke coming there. <laughs> All right. I guess that's it for... <laughs> that's a good note to end on, don't you think? Yeah. Yes. Watch like movies are, or... Uh, watch Bill Cosby... I mean, watch movies or Bill Cosby will rape you. If anything... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to say we're topical, but that, that was really... Uh... That was just unpleasant. That was unpleasant, yes. Yeah. And with that, we'll just leave you on those words. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, my.